today we will be making the triple swirl necklace. So let's get to it. Open up Blender and select General from the splash screen. We don't need any of those, so press A for select all and X for delete. Press one on your numpad for front orthographic view. I've put a link in the description for the image of the triple swirl necklace, and I'm gonna add it to the screen so that we can copy the shape of it. To add an image, press Shift A for add, and instead of mesh, scroll down and you will see underneath empty, there is image. Move across and click reference. Uh, navigate to wherever you put the picture of the triple swirl necklace. Let me just find that now. Select it and click load reference image. Use the scroll wheel to zoom in. Press shift A to add. Pick mesh, slide across to the primitives and pick UV sphere. Before you click anywhere else, in the bottom left hand corner, click on add UV sphere. And instead of 32, we're gonna change the segments to six. So click in the box, change that to six and press enter. And there we go. Press tab to go into edit mode. And you can see the shape is kind of blocking our view of the image. So in the top right hand corner, just above the XYZ gizmo, you'll see the X-ray button, click that. That's great. I'm gonna scale it down so that it's the same fatness as the image underneath it. So press S for scale and just drag it in like that. And now I'm gonna elongate it. So press S for scale, Z for Z direction only and pull away from the center. You'll see it's starting to get longer. I don't want to scale it to the entire length of the original image there. So just left click when it's a little bit shy of the mark. It's also riding a bit high there, so I'm going to press G for grab, Z for Z direction only, and move it down to about there. Left click to confirm. So we need to alter it so it fits a more teardrop shape. Um, double tap A to deselect all. And I want you to click on the very bottom vertex. There we go. And what we're going to do is we're going to drag it down, but we're going to make it drag the other vertices with it. So just above it in the center, you'll see this radio button called proportional editing. I want you to turn that on. So click that. And with your vertex selected, press G for grab, Z for Z direction only. And you can see uh, it gives you this outer circle. And that's like the sphere of influence that it has. If you use your scroll wheel, you can make that sphere of influence bigger or smaller. Um, so I'm gonna make it a little bit smaller. I'm gonna do this in about two steps. I'm just gonna pull the vertex down a little bit. Yeah, about there. Left click to confirm. I'm gonna select it, it's still selected. I'm gonna press G for grab, Z for Z direction only, but this time I'm gonna decrease the sphere of influence and just pull down a little bit further and left click. I'm gonna do the same with the top vertex. So double tap A just to make sure nothing's selected and click on the top vertex. Proportional editing is still turned on. We're gonna press G for grab, Z for Z direction only. And I'm just gonna use my scroll wheel to affect the sphere of influence of that drag. I'm gonna go to about there. I'm gonna hit G for grab, Z for Z direction only, and I'm gonna decrease that just to give me a little bit of a point. There we go. Left click to lock it in. Now obviously we have to reduce the radius of these ones. So double tap A to deselect all. So hover over the horizontal there, press Alt and left click to select the entire loop. And I'm gonna change the proportional editing. If you see the drop down menu there, right now it's on smooth. I'm gonna go for inverse square. These are just um, different 
shapes that it'll pull when it's pulling the, all the vertices around. So press S for scale and see what it does and just adjust your circle till it gives you roughly the shape you're looking for. I think that's pretty good there, that looks nice. Left click to confirm and just take a look around and see if there's somewhere else you want to change. I think I want to push out that section there a little bit. So I'm just going to hover over that horizontal edge there, press Alt, sorry, first of all, double tap A to deselect everything. Press Alt and left click, press S for scale, and then just push it out a little bit. And don't forget to adjust your scroll wheel to get the shape you want. Like that is going the wrong direction. So just pull it in a little bit. Right there looks good. And then left click to confirm. Okay, now that looks pretty good. I, I'm happy with that. Obviously, the thing about the triple swirl is that it has a bit of a twist into it. So we're going to use the proportional editing again. Um, go back up to the drop down list on proportional editing and pick smooth. Double tap A to deselect all. Select the top vertex. Tap OR for rotate. Z for rotate around the Z axis only. And move your mouse. You can see it's starting to twist around. I want to increase, using my scroll wheel, increase the sphere of influence of that. And I think actually in the picture I have it swirling the other direction. So we'll just swing it around like that. That looks pretty good. Left click to confirm. Double tap A to deselect all. And then select the bottom vertex. OR for rotate. Z for Z axis only. And then just sort of continue it round so that I'm going to decrease the sphere of influence there so it's just affecting the lower half just to keep on giving it that little swirl. Okay, left click to confirm. Now that I'm looking at it with the swirl in it, I still think it might be a little bit too big. So press A for select all. For this, we're gonna turn off the proportional editing because it, we don't need it. We're changing the scale of the whole shape. So go up, click on the radio button for proportional editing to turn it off. I'm going to press S for scale and move towards the center to make it slightly smaller. I think that looks about right. Left click to confirm. And then I'm going to stretch it out a little bit more. So S for scale, Z for Z direction only, and pull away from the center to stretch it out. And left click to confirm. And I think that looks good. Now we don't really need the reference image anymore. So if you go over to the right hand side where it says empty, there's a little eyeball beside it. Just click that and it'll hide it. Uh, we don't need the x-ray anymore. So just click on the x-ray button and we're back to solid. Okay, so double tap A to deselect all. Uh, press and hold the middle scroll wheel to have a look around at your, your object. That looks pretty good. I like it. Okay, so now we have to delete a few faces because obviously these are more like three ribbons swirling down. Um, and to do that, if you see in the top left hand corner, you have three little buttons there. That's vertex, edge and face. We're going to click on face because we're going to delete a load of faces. So on your shape, just using the middle scroll wheel to move around and have a look, I'm going to select that face there and I'm going to delete all of these in a row. Uh, you could do them one by one, but to save time, just hold down the shift key and click on the faces you want to get rid of. Use your scroll wheel to go around, hold down shift again. There we go. I think that's high enough. Press X for delete, and it'll give you the option pick faces. And you want to do that, um, you want to do that two more times, so skip a face and then pick another one. Just using my middle scroll wheel push down to navigate around. Hold down the shift key and select the faces you want to get rid of. Make sure they're the same as the first one that you took out. Press X for delete, choose faces. 
and do the same once more. That's the one, it starts there. Hold down the shift key, click on the faces you want to get rid of. X for delete, faces. Okay, I think I'm actually going to take out another one down the bottom. I think we get away with it. So shift, there we go, X, faces. I'm going to take one off the top as well, actually. Okay, X and faces. Okay, that looks pretty good. Press one to get the front orthographic view. And now we're gonna add some modifiers to give it a bit of thickness and to smooth it out. So over on the right hand side, pick the monkey wrench, click add modifier, and under generate, you'll see one called solidify. So once you've added the solidify modifier, you can see it over here. Um, the one you're interested in is thickness. So I want you to click and hold that and move your mouse. You can see you're changing the thickness of your object. Go for something around there. Minus 0.14 looks good. And let go. And now obviously we have to smooth this shape out. So we're going to add another modifier. Um, so click add modifier. Under generate, we're going to pick subdivision surface. And I'm going to up you see down here, I'm going to up those numbers to three. Now I'm just going to use the middle scroll wheel, push down to have a look around my object, see if I'm happy with it. And that's pretty good. Yeah, I like it. Press tab to go into object mode. And I'm going to apply the solidify modifier. And what that means is I won't be able to go back and change the thickness. It's going to create a mesh out of the information. So just go over to where it says solidify on the drop down list, click apply. And you can see that it's disappeared off the modifier stack. And if we go into edit mode, press tab, you'll see that now I have a completed mesh. Okay. So now I'm going to try and make the bottom a little bit pointier. Um, so I'm just going to zoom out to give myself a little bit of space, top and bottom. I'm going to select the bottom vertex, press G for grab, Z for Z direction only, and just pull that down ever so slightly. Like so. I'm going to go wild, I'm going to really pull it down. And then double tap A to deselect all. I'm going to try uh, bring it in a little bit concave like that. So hover over that edge, alt left click to select the entire loop. And instead of G, I'm going to tap GG. And this is going to follow the line down rather than just drag it down. So press GG and move it down. You can see it's following the line of that curve really nicely. So I'm going to put it around there. Left click to confirm. And then I'm going to press S just to scale it in a little bit so that we get a nice return like that. Left click to confirm. And to get a better look of it, I'm going to go into object mode, so tab out. Yeah, that's a nicer finish on there. Tab back into edit mode. And press the X-ray button up here, toggle X-ray. I just want you to zoom in on the top there and you can see that it's making a hollow cone on the inside. And we don't really want that because sometimes if the wall thickness is too thin, then Shapeways won't be able to print it. So I'm going to drag a lot of that down so that we've got a nice solid top for attaching on our hoop. So I'm going to start with that one. I'm going to pull that down slightly lower, hover over the horizontal. Alt and left click to select the entire loop. GG will grab along the path that's already there. And just grab it down a little bit and left click to confirm. We're going to do the same with this one here. So hover over the horizontal line. Alt and left click. GG to grab along the existing path. Just drag her all the way down to about there. And left click to confirm. Finally, we've got the last vertex up the top. Left click to select it, G to grab, 
z in the z direction and pull it down to about there let's click to confirm and now that means you've got a nice solid bit of metal there basically for attaching your ring so turn off the x-ray mode so we can get a better view of the shape and i think i would prefer if that tapered in ever so slightly um, so i'm going to hover over that edge there alt and left click i am going to scale it in a little bit so s for scale and just pull it in ever so slightly and then gg to grab it and move it up to about there I'm going to move this one up and scale it in as well just so I get a nice little return on that bit. So hover over the edge, alt and left click, gg to grab and move it along the selected path to about there and then I'm going to press s for scale and just bring it in ever so slightly. It gives it a slightly more refined look. Okay. I'm just going to hold down the middle scroll wheel and have a look around to see if I'm happy with the shape. And there's a little bit here that I'm not too happy with. You can see that line there is looking a little bit rounded. I think I would prefer it to be a little bit smaller than that. So I'm going to switch to edge select mode. I'm going to click on, you can see that edge just there. I'm going to press GG to move along selected paths and I'm going to just move it ever so slightly that way and left click and I'll do the same to the other three along that line so select and GG and just move it across a little bit select GG move it across not too much now it's it's pretty subtle but I think that looks better yeah okay I'm happy with that um press one for front orthographic view and just zoom out until you can see the entire shape if you press shift while you hold down the middle scroll wheel it, you are able to just move it in that plane and that's sometimes really handy when you're zooming in and out so say it was down here and I was zoomed in and I wanted to check out something just a little bit lower just hold shift middle scroll wheel and you can move the shape around without orbiting around it basically you can zoom out a little bit more shift and middle scroll wheel i want to make a bit of space over the top because we're going to add the hole for the chain to go through so make sure you're in edit mode you can check that over in the top left hand corner press shift a for add and you're going to add a cylinder everything in this edit space has the same modifier attached to it so because we put a smoothing subdivision surface modifier on our main shape then the cylinder we added has it as well so before you click anywhere else I want you to change the vertices to 20 and press enter and for cap fill type have nothing there we go Press OR for rotate, X for rotate about the X axis, and type in 90 on your numpad, press enter. Press S for scale, just drag it down till you get a nice looking shape. G for grab, Z for Z direction only, and lift it above the shape. You don't want to interfere with the vertices, it'll get too confusing. About there, left click to confirm. Press and hold the middle scroll wheel just to have a look at it. That's obviously too wide, so we're going to squash it in, basically. If you look at the axes on the ground, you've got the red one and the green one. If you look over here, it will tell you that the red one is X and the green one is Y. So we only want to squash it in the green direction, in the Y direction. So press S for scale, Y for Y direction only. And if you bring it in, you'll see it will only change it in the y direction which is what we're after so about there we'll try that left click to confirm press one on your numpad for the front orthographic view and press e for extrude s for scale and just move it away from the center yeah to about 
So I'm gonna go for there. Left click to confirm. Press and hold the middle scroll wheel just to get a good look at it. And you can see because we scaled it, it's also flared out a little bit. So press S for scale and Y for in the Y direction only and just bring it in so that we've got it more or less square to about there. Left click to confirm. Okay, and one to get back to front orthographic. Double tap A to deselect all. And I'm going to delete a number of faces off this donut just in this area here so I can bring the hoop down and attach it to the main shape. So there's a million and one ways you can select things in Blender and it's a fine art in itself. But what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna turn on in the top right hand corner here, the X-ray button. I'm gonna, in the top left hand corner, select faces. And then I'm gonna press C, which is circle select. And you can see that if you move your scroll wheel, you can get bigger and smaller selection area. And I'm just gonna uh, click and hold my left mouse button and select those faces there. Right click confirms it. And if you press and hold your middle scroll wheel and have a look around, you'll see that it has selected the far side as well. That's because X-ray was on. If X-ray wasn't on, it would just select what it could see in the front. So you can turn X-ray off Press one to go to the front orthographic view and press X for delete, faces. Now I probably shouldn't have turned X-ray off actually because I'm gonna turn it on again now. C for circle select, make it slightly bigger. We want to select the entire torus there. Right click to confirm. G for grab, Z for Z direction only. And I want to pull it down so that it's just there. Left click to confirm. Now turn off the x-ray, for real this time. <laughs> I'm gonna press and hold the middle scroll wheel and just have a look how these faces line up. And you can see that they don't really line up that well. The plan is to delete one of these faces and then attach it to the ring. Now that face there looks like it's too big, so I'm gonna make it smaller. I'm gonna do that by adding an edge loop. So hovering over the vertical line there, press Control or and you can see you've got an edge loop, brilliant. Using your scroll wheel will increase or decrease the number of edge loops you want. I only want one. Left click to confirm that you only want one. And then you can still move your mouse up and down depending on where you want this edge loop to be. If you want it in the center, press right click. If you don't want it in the center, then place it where you want and left click. So I'm gonna go slightly lower than center and left click. Now, the only other thing I'll say about this face here, which is the one I want to delete, is that it's slightly, it's rotated ever so slightly too far. So we're gonna rotate the entire shape there to line up with the hoop at the top. So how do we do that? We're gonna circle select again. So one for front orthographic view, zoom out so you can see the entire shape change over to face select view and hit the x-ray button press c for circle select and you can change the size of the circle as you go so i'm just gonna make it smaller when i get up to there if you accidentally touch off that hoop and select something you're not meant to um, just right click to confirm that zoom in so you get a better view that's shift and middle mouse button so i can zoom move it around and just press C again, but this time hold down the shift key, it'll deselect. And there you go. So right click to confirm. I'm gonna press and hold the middle mouse wheel just so I can scroll it round. I'm gonna turn off X-ray so I get a better view. And I'm gonna press OR for rotate, Z around the Z axis. I'm just gonna rotate it round until those two faces are more or less facing each other. <laughs> <laughs> so that looks good. Left click to confirm. Double tap A to deselect all. And yeah, that looks nice. Those two faces are lining up. Okay, I'm gonna select this face here. I'm gonna press S, press X for delete, faces. I'm gonna zoom in 
and get a better look. And I'm going to join that with that. And to do that, I'm going to pick Edge Select. Just click that. I'm going to select the edges that surround that hole. So shift and click to select the right edges. You can always move around while you're doing this to get a better view. And once you have those two selected, go to edge and bridge edge loops. And there you can see it's done a lovely job of attaching the ring to our shape. Double tap A to deselect all and we'll do the same thing over the other side. So go to face select mode, select that face there, X to delete it, faces. Go to edge select mode, select, holding down the shift key, the edges that you want, moving around so you get a nice view. Go up to the edge menu, bridge edge loops. And there we go. Okay. Go to vertex select mode because th that little bump in the middle looks a bit weird. So select the top vertex, G for grab, Z for Z direction only, and just pull it down like so. And there you go, we've attached it. So one for the front orthographic view. Now I think it's actually made the top look too squat. So we're gonna move it up a little bit, give it a bit more space up there. So stick on the X-ray mode, double tap A for select all, deselect all, um, go to face select, press C for circle select, and just select the entire ring up there. G for grab, Z for Z direction only, and just move it up like that. Try there. I think we could even go smaller with it. So press S for scale and just scale it in as well. Like so. Left click to confirm. Looking at the shape now, I think I'd like to lift that edge loop just across there. So I'm just going to switch to edge select. Double tap A to deselect all. Alt and shift over that edge there and G for grab, Z for Z direction only. I'm gonna move that up to about there. Left click to confirm. And I'm just gonna press S for scale and bring it in ever so slightly. Okay, I like the look of that. Left click to confirm. Turn off X-ray to get a better view tab to go to object mode to get a better idea how the shape is looking. Zoom out, press and hold the middle scroll wheel to have a look around. Lovely, we're nearly there. Now you might think that we're nearly there and ready to print, but the truth is we never set the scale on any of these things. So if you want to know how big the shape is, just type N on your keyboard and it'll bring up the properties panel. And if you press item and look down the bottom at the dimensions, there we go, it's 4.28 meters high. That's quite a necklace. <laughs> now the reason I didn't set the scale earlier on was because Blender is actually happier working in meters. Um, sometimes if you're working on things that are too small, it gets a bit glitchy. Um, so we're going to have to set the scale now and the only thing that I would worry about is the size of this hole here. That has to be right. The rest of it is a matter of aesthetics. So what size should that be? Well, for a normal fine silver chain, you'd be looking at about a diameter of three millimetres. So what we're going to do, and it's not very scientific, but it does work, is we're going to create a shape that is three millimeters in diameter. And we're just going to scale that down and eyeball it basically until it's more or less right. Because you know, when it comes to, when it comes to ring sizes, it is important that you hit on the right size because a millimeter here and there makes a huge difference to the size of the ring. But when it comes to something like this, it's a chain fitting through it, a couple of 
microns here and there isn't going to make much difference. And the first thing we need to do is create a shape with a diameter of three millimeters. It'll be very hard to see because <laughs> obviously it's going to be tiny. So press shift A for add. Uh, mesh, yes, and pick the circle. Now the reason you can't see it if you press and hold the middle scroll wheel is because it's in a different plane. So we'll just set the parameters and then we'll rotate it the way we want it. And the radius, uh, well we want a diameter of 3 mil, so the radius is 1.5 mil. So just type in there 1.5 mm and press enter. Now it's tiny so it's going to be hard to see. Um, and then we are going to rotate it around the x-axis so it's facing us. So press OR for rotate, X for rotate around the x-axis, and type in 90 and press enter. Now I know it's small but trust me <laughs> it's there and it is in the right direction. So press 1 to go to front orthographic mode, select our big shape and I just want you to press S for scale and just scale it down really tiny right there. Zoom in on it by pressing the full stop on the numpad. Okay, so if you zoom in, you can see our circle there. We have a little bit more scaling to do. So just press one for the front orthographic view, press S for scale and drag it in a little bit further to about there. Zoom in, see how we're doing. Okay, so we've gone a little bit too far. So S for scale and just pull it out a little bit. And once you're relatively close, I want you to click on the circle itself, uh, press G for grab, Z for in the Z direction and pull it up to roughly where the hoop is and go into X-ray mode so you can see it and just zoom in on that area there. So you can see we're very close to what it needs to be. Click on our necklace. You can still see the outline of the circle there. That's what we're aiming for. So S for scale, just go a little bit uh, pull away from the center. Now, obviously, it's getting bigger. Like so. Try about there. Click on the circle. G for grabs, F for Z direction, and just see if it lines up. Because you know it's very close, but it could go a little bit bigger. So click on our necklace, S for scale, and just go move away. There. That looks good. So you can see from the circle that it's more or less three millimeters. So that's good. You don't need the circle anymore. So uh, just with it selected, press X and delete. Okay. Turn off X-ray. And there we have it. Our triple swirl necklace with a chain attachment. Don't forget to save it, file, save, and don't forget to create the STL file so that you can print it with Shapeways. So click on File, go down to Export and slide across and click on STL. It'll offer you the name triple swirl.stl. That's okay, press Export. And again, this is a simple enough shape so that didn't take too long. Well done for getting to the end of the triple swirl. If you're only coming new to Blender, I know that was a lot to take in. Don't forget to upload your STL file to Shapeways and you too will be getting one of these in the post. There we go. From virtual reality to reality. You can't beat it. Thanks for watching. Don't forget to like and subscribe. And if you would like to buy me a coffee, then there is a link in the description. And I will see you in the next video. See you then.